I heart, get ready. Fantasy football is here. Welcome to the Scout Fantasy Show. ScoutFantasy.com is home to the Fantasy Football World Championships and the best players in the world. Real money winners giving their secrets to help you win. Now exclusively on iHeart. This is the Scout Fantasy Show with your host, the one, the only, Dr. Roto. Hey there, it's Dr. Roto from Scout Fantasy Sports. And man, let's get this podcast started. I got a lot to say. So what I didn't do yesterday was I didn't go through the box scores for this week's games. I'm going to do that today. And of course, I'm going to take a closer look at last night's debacle. If you're a Washington Redskins fan, you cannot be happy right now. But we're going to try to go through each each game, see what I saw, and break it down for week 16, guys. I mean, it's as simple as that. Your fantasy playoffs are, are here. The championships are here in like 90% of leagues. If you're playing in week 17, I've discussed this before. Shame on you. Shame on you. Really. Week 17 is a nightmare. And you know better than that. Okay? You know better than that. But I'll just start it out here with this game. First, I'll do the uh, Miami Jet game. I'll start with Saturday, Okay. And uh, what we saw here with Matt Moore, and I said this to you before the game, I told you that Matt Moore was one of the top backups in the league. And I was right. Matt Moore threw for four touchdown passes. Now, I know that the Jets are horrible. I get it. Jets are horrible. But Matt Moore is not that bad. Matt Moore is not that bad. And is he startable in week 16 if you were desperate? Yeah, I don't think so. But in DFS, he might be. All right, Jarvis Landry went three for 108 and a touchdown. But the key, two key guys here on the other side were Bilal Powell had 16 carries for 84 yards and 11 receptions for 78 yards. It just goes to show you what kind of monster Bilal Powell could be in a PPR league. I mean, that the Jets even played Matt Forte made no sense to me. None. And I'll tell you, this other kid... Robbie Anderson just impresses me week in, week out. Four for 80 and a touchdown. Brandon Marshall had 11 targets, one catch. This guy is done. He is mentally done. He has given up. Absolutely given up. So if you have Brandon Marshall, please, I beg you, don't start him next week. All right, Detroit and the Giants. Detroit is, I don't know. You know, Adam Ronis and I talk about this all the time. They're 9-5. and five. But if they didn't make the playoffs, we wouldn't be shocked. They're going to have to beat the Green Bay Packers, and I don't know if they can do that. I just don't know if they can do that. They've got two more games against the Cowboys and the Packers. They're going to have to win one of those games to get in the, to guarantee a, a playoff spot. I just don't know if that's going to happen. Uh, I know that Golden Tate has been out of his mind, eight receptions for 122 yards. Nobody else really did anything, but this was to be expected with Matthew Stafford not at 100% playing outdoors against the Giants. For the Giants, Eli Manning, 201 yards and two touchdowns. Now, yes, he got two touchdowns, but where's the Eli Manning that we know and love, right? The Eli Manning that knows how to throw it down the field. I mean, this, this year, just in the last few weeks, I mean, he's at 199 yards, 261. He's had a couple of games, you know, over you know, 300 yards, but not that many, really not that many. And when we think of Eli Manning, we think of a guy who throws the football. But this year, if I told you that his numbers are just, I mean, 3,491 yards, 25 touchdowns, this guy threw 4,400 yards last year. So two weeks to go, unless he's getting, I don't know, 500 yards a game, I don't even know if he's going to break 4,000. What if I told you that? So as I was going through the numbers, here are the last seven weeks. Actually, from week seven on. 196, 257, 240, 227, 194, 195, 193, 201. I mean, that's not good. That's just not good. And it's hurting Odell Beckham Jr. slightly, but it's really hurting Sterling Shepard Roto. I love this kid, but he's not getting enough catches. So it's been brutal. Now, I'm faced with a decision. I don't know if you are. 
But I'm faced with a decision next week of Eli Manning or Jameis Winston, and I don't know what to do. I know that I like Eli Manning's matchup, but can I play him? I'm not sure. The guy I really want to play is Paul Perkins, but the Giants have to commit to him more. They're still giving Rashad Jennings way too many carries. All right, Green Bay against Chicago. Aaron Rodgers cost me uh, a league there. I mean, 252 yards, no touchdowns. I mean, I knew he was injured. I knew the game was cold, but it's just I need touchdowns. And I'm not going to win when I'm getting, you know, 12 points for my quarterback. It's just not going to happen. I could have played Matt Barkley and won. I mean, 362 yards, two touchdowns. That's what you expect. But in this game, I think we saw the emergence of Ty Montgomery and Kristen Michael as a legitimate backfield for Green Bay. Okay, without Eddie Lacy, forget James Starks. Montgomery and Michael will take this team as far as they can go. Jordy Nelson, Jared Cook. Jared Cook's been very spotty. Up and down, up and down, up and down. For Chicago, Jordan Howard is a beast. 17 for 90 and a touchdown. Four receptions, 23 yards. Is he a first-round pick next year? Probably not. Is he a second-round pick? Maybe. Maybe. My only problem with taking him in the second round is I don't trust John Fox because the guy loves committees. But if I took Jordan Howard in the third round, I'd be okay with that. All Sean Jeffrey, 6 for 89 and a touchdown. Happy to see that. That was pretty good. It was pretty good. All right. In a perplexing game here, it's just a strange game. First of all, Gus Bradley gets fired after the game here. Blake Bortles, 12 for 28, 92 yards. Blake Bortles sucks. I can't say it any more simply than this. He is the guy that looks great in practice, but doesn't play well in the games. You know how that helps you as a fantasy owner? It doesn't. When Allen Robinson has two catches for 15 yards, you know that something's wrong. Now, Houston was going down the same road with Brock Osweiler, who sucks as badly as Blake Bortles, but kudos to Bill O'Brien, who said, you know what? I can't watch this train wreck anymore. I'm bringing in Tom Savage. Tom Savage comes in 23 for 36, 260 yards. Changes the face of this franchise. The Texans are now 8-6. and six. And they got a real good shot at the playoffs. Real good shot. Texans have two more weeks. The Bengals and the Titans. Two winnable games. Go out there and win them. Let DeAndre Hopkins do his thing. I'm excited to see what Tom Savage can do. I am. I'm very excited. All right. Buffalo and Cleveland. You know, Tyrod Taylor is just really being disrespected by Buffalo. This Buffalo team is 7-7, and and I'm not a big Rex Ryan fan, but I have to say, considering all the injuries they've had on defense and all the injuries they had on offense, to be 7-7, and not so bad a year. It's not so bad a year. Tyrod Taylor, I think, is, is, is fine, and LaShawn McCoy is a fantasy god. But, I mean, look at, the, look at the receivers. Goodwin and Hunter and Felton and O'Leary, these guys stink. So... You know, the Tyrod Taylor's doing such a good job. Let's give him some credit. But I think, you know, Hugh Jackson really ruined this team this year uh, with their quarterback situation in Cleveland, going with RG3. I think investing in RG3 was a bad idea. Josh McCown was better. Cody Kessler looked good, except he had a myriad of concussions. But I think that Cleveland must, must start over at quarterback. There's been talk about Jimmy Garoppolo. Whatever it takes to get... If it takes a first-round pick to get Jimmy Garoppolo, I'm paying it. I'm paying it. That guy's a winner. He's a winner. What you got now is crap. Crap on a stick. All right, the Baltimore Ravens beat the Eagles 27-26. Joe Flacco, 206 yards, two touchdowns. This is the game where you look at it and you go, what happened to Kenneth Dixon? So here's what's happening. When the Ravens are ahead... It's the Terrence West love fest. When they're behind, it's all about Kevin Dixon, Kenneth Dixon. Okay? Kenneth Dixon had nine carries for 36 yards. Terrence West had 13 for 77. West had four receptions and Dixon had nothing. So I think it's pretty clear that when the game is, when they're ahead, it's West. When they're behind, it's Dixon. And I think the Giants are very similar. When they're ahead, it's Rashad Jennings. When they're behind, it's Paul Perkins. 
Now, will this change next year? Probably, but this year probably won't. For the Philadelphia Eagles, i got to give all the credit in the world to Ryan Matthews, 20 for 128 and a touchdown. And i got to give credit to Zach Ertz, who's just the best second-half tight end in fantasy football. Jordan Matthews, 6 for 27. 6 for 27, 4 yards catch. That's not good enough, dude. That's not helping me when I play you in DFS all over the place. Tennessee against Kansas City. Marcus Mariota, 241 yards, no touchdowns, but hey, they win the game. Say what you want about Mariota and Jameis Winston, two teams on the precipice of a playoffs. Second year in the league, got to give credit where credit's due. But I'm also giving credit to Rashard Matthews, who I told you guys, I cut at one point in the year in one of my leagues. I'm very upset about that. What a good job by Rashard Matthews. All credit to him. And you know what? Finally, I finally, I didn't play him. But Derrick Henry finally shows what he can do. Nine carries, 58 yards, two touchdowns. I'm ready to see Derrick Henry, guys. I like DeMarco Murray. I love Derrick Henry. For Kansas City, I think this is a game where I I really believe this. Sometimes I can just look at the box score and tell whether a team won or lost. I look at Spencer Ware's 70 yards rushing. I look at Travis Kelsey's 41 yards receiving. I look at the fact that Tyree Kill didn't even have a catch. And I know the Chiefs lost. Andy Reid can't play this way. He will get to the first round of the playoffs every year and be done. It's not good enough. So ask me this question, or I'll ask you this question. Would you rather have a team make the wild card every year and lose? Or would you rather have a team never make the playoffs for nine years, but in the 10th win a Super Bowl? Call me crazy, I think I'd rather win the Super Bowl once every 10 years. Because this way, this is like the Chinese water torture watching Alex Smith. He's never winning a Super Bowl. He might make the playoffs, but they're not going to go deep because he's just not a very good quarterback. And they have to compensate with some bad play calling. So what does that really mean? It really means it's a disaster. All right, I've got to give a lot of credit to Andrew Luck, by the way. He goes to Minnesota on the road in a huge game. And wins 34-6. to six. So, great job by Andrew Luck. And he does it without Dante Moncrief. Frank Gore finds the fountain of youth this year and gets 101 yards and four receptions. I mean, 101 yards rushing and four receptions. Just a great year. Just a great year. And, to compound this, they do this with T.Y. Hilton getting 45 yards receiving on three receptions. And they still beat the Vikings. Unreal. Unreal. For the Vikings... Adrian Peterson, I know they bring him back six carries. I mean, Stephon Diggs, two receptions. I think this team is in trouble. I like Mike Zimmer, but they need somebody on offense who knows what's going on. And I don't think Pat Shermer's the guy. And I don't think Sam Bradford's the guy. I know he's 20, 32 for 42 for 291 yards, but he's throwing like two-yard pass patterns. That's not good enough. It's just not good enough. All right, speaking of not good enough, the Cincinnati Bengals aren't good enough. I mean, without A.J. Green, they're just lost out there. Tyler Boyd looks terrible. But Tyler Eifert, one reception for nine yards. Come on. Come on. That cost me how many leagues? Seriously, in the big moment, one for nine, you're killing me. Killing me, Andy Dalton. Never trust Andy Dalton in a big spot, ever. For the Steelers, I have to say... I know Antonio Brown did nothing. And I know Lev Bell was good but not great. Ladarius Green did what we expected. But the defense is playing better. The Steelers' defense is starting to come together. And I'll tell you this. I don't want to play the Steelers in the playoffs. I don't know if they can go deep, but I don't want to play them in the playoffs. I just think they're getting better every week. All right. The Saints against the Cardinals. 48-41. to If you had 89 in your pool for the over-under, good for you. Um, Carson Palmer, 318 yards and two touchdowns. But Drew Brees, 389 yards and four touchdowns. Brandon Cook, 7 for 186 and two touchdowns. Willie Sneed, 8 for 76. Michael Thomas, 7 for 52 and a touchdown. I mean, just amazing, amazing stuff. Mark Ingram doesn't get the touchdown. Tim Hightower gets two. He might lose $100,000. I'd be pissed off too, dude. That's Christmas gift right there. Christmas gift money. 
For Arizona, John Brown plays well, 5 for 81 and a touchdown. Larry Fitzgerald kind of disappeared. He's really slowed up. And I want to look at that. I want to examine that because I have been calling for the demise of Larry Fitzgerald for the last couple of seasons. I really have. How many games has Larry Fitzgerald had over 100 yards receiving? One. How many games has Larry Fitzgerald had more than 10 receptions? Three. How many games has Larry Fitzgerald caught a touchdown pass? Three. And none after week five. So I'm going to give you from week six on. Six for 49, nine for 70, 10 for 74, 12 for 132. Those are all, that's all right. Now the last few games, 6 for 63, 4 for 53, 10 for 78, 3 for 12, 7 for 57. You think it's going to get better against Seattle? Because I don't. I don't. I'm not, I am not touching Larry Fitzgerald next year. Not in a draft. No way. All right, Atlanta beats San Francisco. And, and I want to comment on something here. I put it in my prescription notes, but I want to put it here now too. Sometimes teams need to play without their best player to see how good they are. And the fact that Atlanta's won without Julio Jones Roto is a really good sign. Aldrick Robinson, 4 for 111. Taylor Gabriel, 3 for 60. Austin Hooper with a touchdown. I think this gives a team confidence. Hey, we can win. I know it was the 49ers and the Rams. I get it. But we can still win without our best player. So now they're 9 and 5. They're in a position to make the playoffs, and they did it without their best player. Good job. Good job, Falcons. Really good job this year. Very impressed. For San Francisco, Colin Kaepernick, you know, 183 yards, two touchdowns, whatever. If he doesn't run, he's useless. Three for 21, not good enough. Not good enough. All right, speaking of not good enough, Tom Brady, who is very good, just had a terrible week this week, 188 yards. I think we would say it's predictable. But we expect more from Tom Brady, maybe 240 and a touchdown. But they won the game 16-3. to Denver has no offense. We've said this all year. They have no running game. They have two good players on offense, Demarius Thomas, Emmanuel Sanders. And you shut them down, which is what New England did. Emmanuel Sanders, 3 for 48. It's over. Game over. I don't care how good your defense is. Unless you win 3 nothing, you're not winning. Right? Not winning. It's not good enough in the NFL. It's just not. Oakland against San Diego. This one really hurt a lot of people because I think people thought with the good weather in San Diego and DFS and it's cold, let's stack this game, San Diego and Oakland, and a lot of people got annihilated. Phillip Rivers, 206 yards, two touchdowns. Kenneth Farrow, 39 yards. I mean, Antonio Gates can't come close to breaking this record. Oakland, Derek Carr, 213 yards and a touchdown. Lat Murray doesn't get 100 yards. Amari Cooper, 1 for 28. He disappears yet again in Week 15. I mean, this was like one of the worst fantasy games of the week. One of the worst of the week. And I think people going in thought this was going to be one of the best of the week. So this game killed people fantasy-wise. Really did. Dallas-Tampa Bay, pretty good game. Tampa Bay's close. They're close to being a good team, but when Jameis Winston throws three picks, that's a problem. Cameron Braid played well, but Mike Evans, once again, not doing anything. This is a big week for Tampa this week. Jameis and Evans have to step up against the New Orleans Saints. They need this win. Badly. Tampa Bay plays the Saints and Panthers. Two winnable games. Two winnable games. You want to make the playoffs, Bucks? Get there by Jameis Winston. Play good defense. Make it happen. Something. For Dallas, Dak Prescott, 32 for 36, 279 yards. I don't want to hear the words Tony Romo. I don't want to hear the words Tony Romo. Jason Witten had 10 catches. Des Bryant, 8 for 82. I told you Des Bryant was going to be good. Did you listen? I hope you did. Zeke Alelia, 23 for 159 and a touchdown. I mean, how do I not play this guy every week in DFS? Really, how do I not play him every week in DFS? Seriously. And then finally, last night's game, the Washington Redskins just played their worst game of the year at the worst time. Kirk Cousins, 32 for 47, 315 yards, no touchdowns. 
Deshaun Jackson, 7 for 111. But Jordan Reed got injured. Vernon Davis had some bad drops. They just never got started. And you've got to stop Jonathan Stewart at 132 yards. And Ted Ginn had some big plays. When Cam Newton throws for 300 yards, you know your team's in trouble because Cam Newton never does that. I mean, Cam Newton was almost good. Ugh, can't even believe I'm saying that. Ugh. Hate Cam Newton, but he played well. I got to give him credit. All right, right now, I want you to go to playscoutfantasy.com. We've got three playoff games coming up. We've got Maui Madness, 25 bucks could get you a week in Maui and airfare included for four people. Beat Dr. Roto and beat Adam Ronas. If you beat us, you get a month to scout for free. If you win the whole thing, you get, a, you get an entry in the online championship. Cost you nothing to join. And then finally, our Playoff Fantasy World Championship, $199 to enter. One out of six people, because there's only six in the league, will win 500 bucks with a chance to win 20 k It's as simple as that. But right now, it's time to put away the insurance cards, put away the copay. The office is closed, my friends. Please check out scoutfantasy.com. Enter the promo code ROTO. That's R-O-T-O. You pay for one month. We'll get you two more for free. We're on tonight at Sirius XM Fantasy Sports Radio. That's right. Tuesday night, 6 to 8 p.m. Sirius 210, XM 87. Catch us there. All right, guys. See you tomorrow. Be well. Take care. Thanks for listening to the Scout Fantasy Show. There's never been a better time to join the Scout Army. Visit ScoutFantasy.com. Use the promo R-O-T-O for two months free. And don't forget, fantasy players, please thumbs up the podcast on the iHeart app. See you next time. Go Scouts!